said, uh, he said, did the liberals do nothing to oppose this bill? And so that's the question that I, I wanted to be able to answer. So I thank you very much for, for, for asking that question, and that gives me a chance to be partisan, which I'm not often partisan in Kingston, but I'm quite partisan in, in Ottawa, partly. So, uh, David, you mentioned, uh, you talked about the, the vote being a whip vote, and, and why would I vote the way I am voting if I'm not running a game, and, and uh, my electoral prospects don't, don't matter. There, there are actually three of us in the uh, Liberal caucus who are not running a game. Uh, that would include uh, Urban Cobbler, uh, Frank Valeria, who represents Guelph, and, and myself. And this was, uh, this is one of these votes where I wouldn't really call it whip because in a whip vote, people are checking that you're there and, and people who really don't want to vote uh, uh, either have to sort of quietly not be in their seats in the house or, you know, the whip is checking very carefully uh, those votes. This was not a whip vote. This was a vote that came out of a discussion, uh, many discussions. Discussions in the leader's office, discussions in the caucus. And uh, I really do believe in the vote that I got, and I want to explain why, because there are some good reasons uh, for it. But first I want to go to this big question of uh, oversight. How would a government bill to establish oversight? Now, unfortunately, because of timing, the minority government between 04 and the end of 05 did not last very long, the parliamentary uh, committee work actually was very extensive and la lasted a long time, which is why the government legislation was, was delayed. Uh, but the Liberal Party put forward a bill to provide oversight. And since then, since we've been in opposition in every parliament, we've put forward private members bills to establish uh, oversight. In the current parliament, we had two bills, one by my colleague Joyce Murray, who represents Vancouver, she had a bill to have oversight over CSAC as well as the other intelligence agencies. And Wayne Easter, who is our public safety critic and our lead on Bill C-51 in the House, uh, he's a liberal member from Malpac in Prince Edward Island. He also has a bill put forward that would provide uh, oversight for, um, for the uh, for the Carter's National Security Services. So this has been something that liberals have been proposing for about 10 years, and we have realized that there's been a need for oversight since before uh, C-51. The second response to, to David is that we liberals are going to be putting forward about 30 or so uh, amendments to this uh, bill. You can look at uh, the position of the Liberal Party by reading the speeches of our uh, Liberal leader and critics in the House of Commons. The easiest way to do that is to go to openparliament.ca and you type C51, but put it in quotes because the dash means something special in the searches. So put C51 in quotes. Uh, and then you can sort by party and member of parliament. You can read the Liberal speeches. In fact, I'm going to how are we going to vote? I'll read one. How are you going to vote? I've already voted. I'll read you one thing just to, just to contrast the approach of different, just to contrast the approach of different parties. Uh, the, the, um, the first couple of sentences of my colleague Joyce Murray, she's a defense critic. She says, Canadians are well aware of the harm that terrorism can cause and the fear that it can bring. The overarching aim of terrorist activity is to install fear, instill fear, and to divide us from one another and weaken our society. An important duty of Canadians, therefore, is to be vigilant against this divisiveness, as we will always be stronger when we are working together and united against acts of intimidation. And I would contrast that to the conservative speech, which comes right after it. So you just kind of scroll down to see it. The conservative speech by the member for, from Willowdale uh, starts like this. Today's world is a dark and dangerous place. We find existential threats to Western civilization all around us. We saw the manifestations of these threats in Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu and in Ottawa this past October. 
So the contrast, there's quite a contrast. It's still fear-mongering. It's still fear-mongering, though. It's still... That's the conservative speech. Both. That's Both. the conservative speech. Now, a lot of people have written it to me, and many are upset about the vote. And I want to talk about what the vote means. First of all, I think we'll all, we should all agree that this bill is going to become law. No. No, why? There is no other, there's no example of, in this, there's no example in this majority parliament of, of legislation like this. Well, let's, let's, let's look at how we can do the best for what we want to achieve. I think some people have written in and said, but look, in Cedar, this government hasn't been possible to put in that oversight. The vote means we voted for the bill because we welcome the measures in the bill that would help keep Canadians safer. The no-fly provisions with some amendments can help deal with some of the situations, may be able to deal with situations like Canadians going overseas to help with ISIS. The preventative detention measures strengthening those may have, uh, may, may have helped in the, in the case where a warrants officer uh, Patrice Vincent was killed by an attack. That person had his passport revoked. The police were unable to uh, limit his, his movements. The information sharing with care, knowing that bad things have happened when information has been shared overseas, uh, is important because we know from the Air India inquiry, the very first uh, recommendation in the executive summary is states that information was available in different parts of government which, if taken together, a competent analyst would have concluded that the Air India Flight 182 uh, was at high risk of, of being a target. So this is what the vote means. The question, though, is what should we do? Because I think we're on the same side. In fact, I would say that the NDP policy and the Liberal policy are essentially the same, except the votes are different. Because the, the policy is after the election, we're going to amend the bill. And that's what Thomas Mulcair says, because he's a real, Thomas Mulcair is a realist, and he knows that this bill is going to become law without satisfactory amendments and perhaps very no significant amendments. So the, the reason for that is, listen, Stephen Harper wants to talk about Bill C-51 as much as possible, and you can see good evidence of that, even in the House, because it keeps getting brought up. But recently, you might have seen the press report where Rona Ambrose was speaking Calgary Chamber of Commerce. The speech was about health policy, mm -hmm. and she switched in the middle of the speech to talk about Bill C-51 and to talk about uh, uh, fighting ISIS over in, uh, in Iraq. Stephen Harper wants to talk about the bill. The thing to do, we are in, essentially, we are in an election campaign. And Stephen Harper wants to talk about Bill C-51 and fighting terrorists as much as possible. The thing to do is to talk about protecting to not let this be a fight against balancing rights versus uh, uh, fighting terrorism. We can do both at the same time. It's quite important to do both at the same time. It's important to not let Stephen Harper frame this election uh, as, a, uh, as a choice between fighting terrorism or not fighting terrorism. That's what Stephen Harper wants to do. The Liberals in the past couple of weeks in question period and around the country, we've been talking about the economy. We've been talking about post-secondary uh, education. We've been talking about research, investing in infrastructure. Uh, we've been talking about the fact that the conservatives don't have a plan B. Well, I'm sorry. You did challenge the Liberal Party, so I'm here as the Liberal member of the party. Okay, one more. So what I would ask of people here today is, by all means, talk about what's wrong with this bill, because there are a lot of things wrong with this bill that need to be but also, uh, as this year goes on, do not let Stephen Harper frame the ballot box question as, are you going to fight terrorism or not? Because that's what he's going to do, and that's what he's already doing. How long is that debate that you would like to see disappear? How long should it take for that to disappear? How long is it before the final vote is done? Maybe work is... It's, uh, let me count. The committee is supposed to hear from witnesses, and uh, the parties have agreed that that will be ended end by the end of March. 
And then the committee has to do clause by clause consideration of Bill C-51. Uh, two weeks of 